So what I thought I'd share with you here is what are the electronics and power management systems we put together in order to run this rather large extension to the railway. If you think about, let's talk about the power management initially, or rather the power supply. Each of these staging yards, we've got the big island loop here, and we've got the big loop across over at Sheffield. Each of those is going to hold about 20 trains. And there's a third staging area underneath the bit over there, which we haven't put in yet, which will hold another 20. So we've got 20, 20 and 20 at three levels. We've worked out that that will take about three and a half amps by the time you've got the lit coaches, you've got the resistor wheels, you've got sound chips in the engines, and they're all running. And that gets quite close to a five amp booster. And so what we decided to do was to create the, a board for each area and for each level and then to repeat the electronics and the power supply components in each board so that we have some consistency. So if we take this board here, a second, we have in here a booster, a 5 amp booster. That then goes through a power management board, which basically then splits up if we have any power faults on the track, short circuits, that sort of isolates things down to one or two or three tracks. We then have the BDL 168s, which are the occupancy detection. I should add, which I didn't say earlier, is that this whole storage yard is going to be computer controlled. It's an ideal task for the computer to do. It can deliver trains in the dark all the way down three levels, put it into the right siding, and then finish its task. And it's a really boring job for human beings because it'll take about eight minutes to get a train to its destination. So we have occupancy detection boards here. We also have, on these particular island boards, we have two sets of DAC-20s from Signatrack for controlling the points. And then we're also going to have two additional boards which are in prototype phase with Signatrack to get the input sensors from the dots because we use two sensors per block. This is one board, that's another one, it's almost identical. And on this panel here, on this wall panel, there are going to be eight power boards in total. Each one will deliver one level, so three here will deliver the three levels of storage. The fourth one will deliver the interchange track. Underneath it there's another row of four. The first three will supply for each of the single levels underneath Halifax. And then the last one down here when it goes on will be for the operational track. And then over on the other side, by the rope box, you can see those trays down there. There are four trays there. Two have been populated for the two storage tracks. The third one is over there, which will be for the third track, and then the final storage box behind the rope box there is for the operational level of Sheffield. So all in all, we'll end up with about 12 boosters and a command station controlling um, this layout in this room. It's relatively... I use the word straightforward. There isn't anything particularly complicated about it, really. Um, and as you can see, Pete has done a great job wiring all this stuff up.